Hi everyone, once again, this is Tim N2LCJ, and today we're going to be talking about this Kenwood TS780 uh, Japan Spec Radio that I purchased from eBay seller Japan Store Happy. It's a great radio, but as it is, it comes through only with the Japan frequencies, VHF of 144 through 146, and UHF 430 to 440. Now, um... Why would you want this radio? Well, personally, I run um, net control for a local traffic net. And honestly, I really don't like using um, portable radios, mobile radios. It just, I don't know. To me, I'd rather use a solid base station radio for doing something like that. Anyway, um, we're going to show you a few things. The first thing that you have to do to operate this radio is you have to have a step down transformer because Japan spec radios are 100 volts AC as opposed to the 120 volts that we have coming out of our outlets here in the US. So these are available from Amazon for about 30 bucks. Uh, this one is a 300 watt. Make sure that the, uh, the transformer that you get is adequately rated. Now, just showing you, now this, a, a lot of this video is going to apply to the TS770 also. The only basic differences between the TS780 and the 770 are the fact that the TS780 has the transmit offset. And it also has a separate meter for ALC, whereas the 780 has just the one. Um, so... How do you operate a transceiver with a that doesn't have a transmit offset for the repeaters on a repeater? The same way I have to do it with this radio because the only fault of this radio is the transmit offset is broken. It does absolutely nothing. Um, you'll now also notice up in the corner there is a tone button. The tone button actually transmits a 1750 hertz tone which is required when the repeaters are in sleep mode out in Japan. Um, what you would do is you push this button, hold it in, key up your mic, let it go, and it would wake up the repeater. I'm not sure if they're still like that, but at least they were in the mid-1980s when this thing was made. So, getting back to what I was saying regarding using this on a repeater, or a 770. Over here is the function switch. Now it's got a dual VFO setup. So what you have to do is set one VFO for your receive frequency and set your other VFO for transmit. And when you push the mic, automatically keys down, everything's proper. Now you'll notice I have a PIX um, CTCSS module in there as well and I'll show you how this is mounted. A couple more notes of operation. Right now you'll notice that it's in FM channel mode and the frequency step is pushed. If the frequency step is let go, it goes in 12.5 kc increments. There is no way to change this from what I can see because it appears to be something mechanical geared that way inside the VFO. So. We'll just use the frequency step. It's also got memories. You just hit the memory recall. It's got two calling frequencies and eight other memories. So that covers the basic operation of the radio. Low power is one watt. High power is 10 watts. Not a lot, but honestly, if you're in a urban or suburban area and you can't hit your repeater with 10 watts, you got antenna problems. <laughs> so anyways, um, everything with this radio is working great. So let's show you what I had to do to convert it because it's not really obvious. Now I'm going to remove the top cover. I've taken the liberty of taking the screws off. And we're going to show you inside this thing. One, Now that I had this figured out, I could do it in 20 minutes. But... Once again, it's not real obvious. I should get something to point with here. Okay. You will notice... I have to 
phone to focus. Let's get some light. Okay. That's the CTCSS port wire. I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. There are three jumpers located right here. And all you have to do... Geez, I wish I could get better focus on this. Okay, there we are. See these three jumpers at the back of the board? Now, they're set to... I guess what would be U.S. spec, which is uh, 144 through 148. This, I think, will do 141 through 149, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, um, the international instructions that I have say that you end up <laughs> moving the uh, position of the ferrite bead. So this jumper is actually back here. All you have to do is unsolder all three, re-solder them in the forward positions, and when you turn the radio on, it comes up with the correct frequencies. Now, um, the memory battery in this is, interestingly enough, it's a pack of three AA batteries, and as you can see, it plugs right into the board. Now, let's, let me explain these wires right here. I've got the PIAX board wired to 12 volts, which I'm pulling off the transformer. If you look at the service manual, it gives you the taps, proper taps to do it. But if I can pull these wires back, maybe you can see it a little bit better. And that produces the 12 volts. Note I have the one wire knotted. I always knot the positive one, just in case something's not marked. Now this, I've got, there's only three wires to this uh, setup. There's power ground and one wire that goes to the center deviation pot. The center deviation pot, I've got the note here. Whoops. Ah, video production. Okay. It's VR8. VR8 is the... Um, the pot underneath the radio. You're going to have to remove the bottom cover and you'll have to undo all the wire connectors in the board and flip it over and solder it from the back side of the board because there is no room on the top of the board to do this. So, once you get these simple mods done, now for the wires for the PIAX board, I've just got them rooted through the top cover right over here, and the little the little rivet that holds that cover, I just have taped right to the back of the radio in case it's ever needed. Now, lastly, because the plugs from Japan look exactly like the U.S. ones, except they're unpolarized, I made a note, Japan AC voltage, 100 volts AC only. Because at some point in the ownership of this radio, because the radio will probably outlast me, somebody's not going to know that. So it'll save them from frying what's actually been a very good radio. You just have to jump through a couple hoops to use it. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, hopefully there's a couple other people out there that want to do 780 uh, conversions. They're really a good radio. Um, any questions or comments, please leave them in the section uh, below on the video. And this is N2LCJ. Once again, see you on the air.